what is the One Small Town Initiative? It is an integrated community development plan. And the emphasis here is on integrated. Because everything in, we do in the One Small Town Initiative connects to everything else. And as it sinks in, you'll start to realize how powerful that is. Um, what it is, really, it's people of our town choose to work together to cooperate and collaborate in everything we choose to do. This is a voluntary thing. No one is forced to join one small town. No one has to jump off the edge of a cliff to start something new and jump into uncharted waters. Uh, and that, therefore, it is such a simple thing for us to, to bring in and to introduce. Uh, what we do is we beautify our town, beautify our towns, we start community upliftment projects, we fix roads and parks, start many diverse businesses across all sectors from agriculture to arts and culture, sports recreation. The projects and the businesses that we've looked at across various countries cover all sectors of our life and anything that we as a community choose and decide to do. It's ultimately, it's our initiative. This is not my initiative, this is your initiative, the people of the town that embrace it, that launch it, that manage it for themselves. You manage it for yourself. So whatever businesses you decide you're going to start, those are the businesses that will get launched and started. From grassroots businesses that need very little funding, if any, to large-scale businesses that need, you know, $100 million. And if that is a surprise to you, we have ways and means to, uh, and different, various ways to help raise the funds for any kind of business that we come up with. And to manage all of this, we've created the, the One Small Town platform, the IT platform and the blockchain, to manage all these things. So as I talk about what we're doing in One Small Town, Barrydale and every other small town, the plat IT platform has, that's where the members get registered and signed up and you get your membership cards. Every member gets a, a beautiful One Small Town membership card which uh, Graham has now received here and he's handing them out to people that sign up as members and I'll talk a little bit more about how this works and why this is so important. They work with QR codes and uh, this is all the latest technology and management systems so that no one can cheat you, no one can run away with your money, no one can steal the money from our businesses and so forth. Um, so. The best sized towns for this are small towns. That's why it's called One Small Town Initiative. But uh, for example, we just launched One Small Town in Stockton, California. It's a small city with 350,000 people. Uh, and the reason why they're so excited about it because One Small Town is the only system that, that they found that can actually solve the homeless problem. Nothing, there is no solution for homelessness. But One Small Town has all the solutions for homelessness because of what it is and how it works. So we're going to find that as Stockton starts to grow, other cities are most likely going to adopt it in the USA because, and well, everywhere else. So um, our objective is very simple, to turn small towns into places of prosperity and abundance and care for all residents. That word care is really important. How do we do this? We achieve this with cooperation, collaboration, and importantly, a minimum of 60% ownership or profit share of all the businesses that we start. So what are we doing with the One Small Town model? Every business that we start, the community always remains a majority owner and shareholder of that business. No matter who funds that business from outside, the community always remains a majority shareholder. Therefore, no one can ever come and undermine the businesses that we start. No large corporation or retail store or anyone. Or Bill Gates, so it doesn't matter who you are. Um, we're making our town as productive, as innovative, and as wealthy as we possibly can. So here it comes back to the money. We're not fighting the money. We're actually setting up a system to make as much money as we possibly can because we're doing it for the right reasons. We're doing it collectively for everybody and not just rich individuals that use everybody as their slaves. And this is not communism. It's not socialism. It is called contributionism. We all contribute voluntarily towards our own well-being, towards our own businesses and our own future. 
And slowly but surely, that grows into a very prosperous community. So, we turn our towns into powerful, cooperative labor force. Because the way that it works, everybody needs to contribute three hours a week. That's the simple, fundamental thing. When you join the One Small Town Initiative, the only thing you have to do, it doesn't cost you any money, you don't have to be, do anything crazy, but by becoming a member, you're basically pledging that you will find three hours a week to contribute towards your community and towards the businesses and the community upliftment projects that we start. Three hours a week. That's all it takes. But you realize, and you know, when you first hear this, you go, three hours a week, how's that, that, that's nothing. That's, uh, how's that going to help? But when you realize when a large number of people do that, it changes everything. Suddenly, with this United Labor Force, we create a very invest investment-friendly environment for our investors in our town. As I mentioned, everyone pledges to contribute three hours a week. And in return, we become majority shareholders of all the businesses that we start. Um, how do members benefit? Uh, every participant receives monthly uh, benefits from all that we grow and build and create. We start to share everything because everything is uh, transparent and we own all the businesses collectively. Uh, the monthly benefits are a basket, basket of goods. Imagine we grow, we grow millies or grow corn or sunflowers or bananas or or, uh, or we process mushrooms or fruit or, or we have a brewery or a cement factory or we make bricks or bicycles or laptops. Anything we do, everything we do in the One Small Town initiative is we create stuff for ourselves but then we also create 10 times or 100 times or 1000 times more than what we need. And it's that 10 times more that we need that we then um, sell to the outside world and we export and that's where the profits come from. But because we have a free labor force, let's sorry, let's just finish this here. So we, we have a monthly basket of food that we distribute to ourselves. So whatever we grow and produce and food wise, everybody gets a basket of food based on what food we produced that month. Uh, we get monthly cash dividends from, from the profits that we make from all our businesses. Uh, and also, what has become a very important part of the One Small Town Initiative, the Infinity Token, which has now become one of the most uh, interesting uh, community asset-backed cryptocurrencies, if you want to call it that, uh, community token in the world. Because it's the only <coughs> asset-backed kind of cryptocurrency or community token that we know of. Because each one of those infinity tokens is created by somebody working for three hours. What, what we contributing three hours towards our own businesses. So we in essence have created our own central bank. We create money out of thin air. We create our tokens out of thin air by contributing three hours towards our own community, our own businesses and everything we do. So imagine a town of um, 5,000 people, everyone giving three hours a week. When you start to you know, look at that together, suddenly we have 15,000 hours of labor, free labor, our own labor towards our own businesses. So 15,000 hours of labor. Companies can't afford to pay 15,000 hours of labor. That's why they want to go to automation. Well, we have 15,000 hours of labor. What are we going to do with that? We've chosen to contribute it. What businesses are we going to start that require 15,000 hours of labor? Are we going to grow food? Are we going to make, fr make fridges? Are we going to you know, make medicinal plants? What are we going to do? We can choose what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So just by the way, medicinal plants and bees and honey and agriculture, that's number one on our list. Right? So it'll, it'll digest. It'll, it'll sink in as we go. It's very simple. We decide we're going to start this thing, we plan a bunch of businesses, and we start those businesses as effectively as we can. And, uh, and the profits from those businesses get distributed to all of us. Distributed to all of us. So, but the, the, this free labor force gives us and our funding partners an unrivaled advantage over any large corporation. So we can literally build a manufacture or grow anything we choose to once we start doing this. The, the minimum amount that every member is required to contribute to get all the benefits is three hours a week. That's it. 
but the maximum time that any member can contribute because in countries like South Africa and other you know, uh, emerging countries or so-called third world countries, there are lots of homeless people and lots of uh, people that don't have work. So there are people that have three hours a day. So basically, we have created a solution for everybody that can work three hours a day in your own business. Remember, you're not working as it's not a job. You are a co-owner of that business that you're contributing three hours to. So suddenly, if we have you know, 10,000 people or 1,000 people a day that are contributing three hours, that's equivalent to a very large factory. That's equivalent to an organization that can generate a few hundred million rand per annum or a few hundred million dollars per annum. I'm jumping around a bit because uh, I, you know, I haven't done this presentation for so long. We have evolved so much that now suddenly following this presentation is a little boring and I want to talk to you off the cuff instead of following this. So any large corporation of 4,000 people or more, if you go and do this research for yourself, please do that so you understand that this is not just me blowing hot air. Companies that have 4,000 uh, employees or more, on average, generate on average a billion dollars or more per annum. Okay, let that sink in. A billion dollars, not a billion rand, a billion dollars. Some of them, some uh, companies with four or five thousand uh, employees generate 20 billion dollars a year. It all depends what they manufacture. So any community with 10,000 people that all contribute three hours a day or three hours a week, we have the capacity to start businesses that can rival those companies. And we're doing this for ourselves. We're not doing it for a company. So our commitment towards these businesses is very different to a guy having a job or somebody sitting being a secretary or doing some menial job in a company. They have no vested interest in that. It's a bloody job. Suddenly, if this is your business that you're contributing three hours to, it takes on a very different mindset. We also didn't have to worry about labor laws or any of that because no one's, this is not a job. You're contributing three hours towards your own businesses. Right? So we don't have to deal with that. The important thing here is the infinity token. And the infinity token is something um, that evolved into the Once More Time initiative just more than a year ago. This is an idea that's evolving and growing almost on a daily basis. What, where we are today, compared to where we were a year ago, is almost unimaginable. If you knew what I know, what's going on behind the scenes of one small town, in so many countries, with so many funders that want to get involved, with so many uh, inventors that want to get involved, I'm talking technology that people haven't even heard of, uh, with healing health and wellness products that have not, never seen uh, the markets out there. All these incredible people out there discovering one small town and going, wow, that's where I want to throw my lot in. I like this. I find this is the place for me to put my invention or my healing device or, or my investment into. And it's happening on an exponential level, <coughs> on a daily basis. Well, not a daily basis, but a, a, almost a weekly basis now. So when I talk about <coughs> the infinity token, it's something that, that emerged out of our necessity. Uh, when, when, somebody, when I arrived to do my three hours, first of all, the blockchain, our platform, determines where I should go. So it'll tell you, uh, this week you uh, work at the bakery for three hours, between this hour and that hour. But you put it in, when you sign up as a member, you put all these things in. So the blockchain knows what you've preferred and where you want to go and what you prefer to work in and it allocates you for those three hours that you say you have available. So it doesn't, you know, you can choose when you can work. And all of this is set up. We're not still building it. It's there. It exists. And we're implementing it now. Barry is going to be one of the first times to implement that. So we needed to find a way to, to monitor. If I arrive to do my three hours, how will you know, the, the people know, how will the management know that I've done my three hours? We're so going to use a punch card ticket system or what? And then suddenly we realized, hold on. This creates a great opportunity to create a community-owned cryptocurrency type community token. And this is what gave birth to the infinity token. Because somebody has come, come in to do three hours of work. So if we issue a token against that three hours, that token has got value. It's got real value based on the sweat equity of that person working for three hours. There is no other uh, token or currency like this or cryptocurrency in the world. 
It's not backed by gold. We don't care about gold. You can't eat gold. And if somebody steals the gold, then it's gone and nothing can back it. So the most valuable thing we have as humanity is our choice to work. That is our choice. No one can ever take that away from us. We have the most valuable commodity backing our own community token, that is our own labor. And this is why the value of the infinity token is just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. The more members join, the more they contribute three hours. Every time they contribute three hours, the value of the token goes up a little bit. This is all on the blockchain and it's connected to an algorithm that calculates it automatically. So every time a new member signs up and every time they start to contribute their three hours, the value of that infinity token goes up. So just so you understand, when you sign up as a member, you automatically become a member of One Small Town Worldwide. But you then assign yourself to Barrydale or Stockton or Russell Mutton in Lebanon or the little town in New Zealand whose name I forget now or Horoslavia in Croatia or uh, the other unpronounceable uh, town in Wales. Uh, so these are where we have one small town popping up now. Right? Um, two days ago I had a call from Paris. A really powerful group of people, churches, that want to start one small town there. So when I leave here, I'm going to Paris. They're ready. They, they said, as soon as you can come, we want to go. So this thing is just ready to explode. So, um, so the infinity token is a very, very powerful thing. And uh, w when you sign up as a member, uh, you automatically get a digital wallet attached to your membership account. That digital wallet's on your phone, and uh, every time you finish your three-hour session, the way it works, you, you arrive there with your membership card, and it's got the QR code on the back. That QR code is connected to your name and your digital wallet. The project manager at that, at that project or business has a QR scanner on his or her cell phone. They scan you in, you do your three hours, and when you finish, you leave, you scan out, and an infinity token gets automatically deposited into your digital wallet. Once it's in your digital wallet, you can do with it what you want. You can send it to somebody for free. You can exchange it with somebody in your town. If you don't have millimail and someone's got millimail, you say, oh, here's two tokens, give me a bag of millimail. It becomes a new means of exchange. It's our community token. No one knows who I sent my tokens to. It's our private deal. I can put the tokens up for sale on the, on the One Small Town platform, uh, which is an exchange platform. If somebody wants to buy it, they'll buy it there. So it becomes a whole new alternative exchange system, this Infinity token. It's a very powerful thing. And we expect that more and more people are going to start using it to exchange um, goods instead of just selling the token. So what happens, no one can crash it. It's not traded on, on a crypto um, platforms anyway, or uh, trading platforms. So no one can come and crash the token or devalue it. Um, and um, it just keeps going up in value. So we don't know where it's going to end. At the end of the month, what happens at the end of every month? Um, you'll go to the One Small Town store. Sooner or later, we're going to have to start a One Small Town store. Russell Martin Lebanon is a leading One Small Town. They've already got the One Small Town store. They've opened their One Small Town art gallery. You'll learn a lot more about this. I don't want to overwhelm you with what has already happened, because this is all new. So I'm, I'm treading very carefully here, because just now. <laughs> so Russell Martin has already opened their art gallery. And we hope to open the, uh, uh, an art gallery here, the One Small Town Art Gallery in Barida. We've changed the way art is sold. Uh, it'll never be sold the same way ever again. Because now when artists bring their art into the One Small Town Art Gallery, the art is turned into an NFT itself. The art becomes the NFT. And connected to the One Small Town platform. So every time that artwork is, and by the way, so the art gallery retains 30%, everything is always broken into 60, 30, and then 10, 10% for the One Small Town office here and the One Small Town head office. So 10% goes to, the, to pay the One Small Town offices. So it's a, it's a bottom up. So the people fund the, the offices, not the other way around, right? So it's a bottom up. 
not a top-down uh, structure. So um, when, when the artists bring their art to the Once More Town Art Gallery, um, it becomes um, once a month we have an online uh, auction to the world where we do a lot of marketing and PR for that particular gallery of all the new art that's been brought to that art gallery. Each one of those works of art is turned into an NFT and uh, the artist gets... NFT is a non-fungible token. It's like a, it's like a cryptocurrency, basically. So the art becomes a cryptocurrency in its own form. Um, there's a, there's, NFT is the new craze worldwide in the crypto world, if you want to call it that. Uh, but they, you know, they, it's become a whole scam again. Just like cryptocurrencies are a scam. You know, if people stop buying Bitcoin tomorrow, it's it's gone. If nobody is looking for Bitcoin, the entire Bitcoin empire collapses overnight. It's got nothing backing it. The Infinity Token has got more and more people worldwide backing it because they're working for it. It has true value. So, but just to, to understand how, how quickly this is gro- the Once More Time thing is growing and how we're changing, we, we ch- changing lives of people in ways that we, nobody could have predicted or imagined. And arts and culture is one of those, which is very close to my heart because I'm an artist. I'm a musician. I never thought I'd be doing this. I am. <laughs> so um, the art becomes the NFT, and uh, the artist gets sixty percent. The gallery gets thirty percent. And every time after that, when the work of art is resold, it has to be sold as a resold as an NFT because that's just a, a certificate of that work of art. So it goes through the the platform, and the artist that receives 10% royalty for the resale of that work of art every time it's sold forever but this, is, this is a whole new way of selling art so why would artists put their art in other galleries if they could put it into, into, into a once more time art gallery so the first art gallery is already up and running in, in Russell Martin Lebanon and um, and uh, so it goes so let me just carry on here because uh, I've, I've sort of told you a lot of the stuff that's in here very important. Every business we start, this is not a volunteer thing. We don't start businesses and run with volunteers and work for three hours. No, no, no. Remember, what we're doing here is we're starting, we write very detailed business plans for every business that we want to start. And then we find the best, in the business plan, we find the best possible people to manage those businesses. So if we're going to start a brewery, we need a highly experienced brewmaster to run that brewery. We can't start a bunch of hippies and volunteers to run the bloody brewery. That's going to be a disaster. Right? So this is not about that. This is not about a bunch of hippies, and I love hippies, but it's not about a bunch of hippies growing up some food on a piece of land. And uh, because many people still, you know, they see one small town and they think, oh, yeah, we're going to grow some food together. No, we're doing, that's not what we're doing. We're doing a lot more than that. In fact, infinitely more than that. And we're not just growing some food together. We're growing an insane amount of food together because we're going to feed the world. So next, I'm going to tell you about our seed bank program. But so before we get there, uh, where was I? Um, I lost my train of thought now, so uh, let's, let's carry on. Yeah, the businesses. So each business is managed by the best possible experts to manage that business. Because we, as the owners of that business, want to make as much profit as we can, right? So we want to get the best person there to manage it to make us the best profit. But because we, as the people, do the labor, because this is what we contribute to those businesses, each of these businesses that we own... We save on labor costs. Besides the top management structure, everything below that, the driving, the security, the, the carrying, the, the, uh, the IT, the PR, the distribution, everything else is done for free by us. So each one of our businesses has very low labor costs. And that is the attraction to potential investors. When, they, when we offer our business plans to investors around the world, our business plan looks very our business plans look very different to standard model business plans because the labor cost is there's no labor cost or very little labor cost and you've got to see what that does to the bottom, to the profit line it's and actually the quite incredible sharing his money with this whole bunch of people why would he want to do that 
The who? The, the investor. The investor. As he's, this, not at, his money. he's not sharing his money. The investor is investing 30% and has ownership of 30%. He's not sharing his money with anybody. The, wait, this, it takes a while. It's, it's so counterintuitive to how capitalist, capitalism works. It takes a little while. And when the penny drops for you, one day you'll be doing something and you might think the penny has dropped for you, that's fantastic, but it'll keep dropping more and more as you start to realize how powerful this is, and how infinitely powerful this is. It has no limit to what we can do, because we're doing this together. We're not doing this individually. As try, let me do this for myself and try and make as much money as I can. This takes a whole different approach to what we're doing. So... Obviously, we have to have some sort of a management system in the one small town. So, we create a people's council, and the, the platform has a way for people to vote, so there's no crooking and you know, none of this stuff that we find. And obviously, if you're in politics, you can't be on the people's council. If you're a member of the council, you can't be on the people's council. This is the people's council, not a political council. So there are all kinds of very basic fundamental rules that we put in place. So this cannot be hijacked by um, potential infiltrators and so forth. So everyone in our town is invited to join. It is a free um, and voluntary membership. And if you don't participate, that's fine. Have a nice life. We love you. God bless you. You know, enjoy your life. But you're going to start seeing more and more pe people participating. And the important thing here is that there are actually two sides of, this, of, this, of the initiatives. They're the businesses that we need to start, that make profit for us, but there's also the community upliftment projects that's beautifying our town, uplifting our town, making it beautiful for visitors and tourists. That's what costs money. That's what municipalities can't afford. But we can do it because we choose to. So... And while we're doing it, we're rewarding ourselves with our infinity tokens and with a plate of food and with everything else that we set up for ourselves. So one of the most important things that every One Small Town initiative should do, and this is what I've been pushing um, wherever I go, is to start a community kitchen. Because the poorest of the poor have nothing. They're going to want to contribute three hours a day. For that, they're going to earn themselves a token and they get a plate of food at the end of that three hour session. And at the end of the month, when we, have, when we start gathering all the food we grow and everything, they're going to be able to go and get a food basket at the end, a basket of goods from the One Small Town store as well. And that, that basket of goods is going to be growing. The more we produce, the more we manufacture in our town, it could be milly meal and bread and milk, it could be a laptop, a bicycle, a fridge, nail clippers, who knows what. Whatever we do is going to be in that basket of goods. You're not going to get a laptop every month, but we'll decide, you know, if we're manufacturing laptops in our factory here in Barrydale, that every five years, every one of our members gets a new laptop. And that's what we budget for. And that's what we manufacture for ourselves. So that's the ideology and the plan with which we enter this. So no one is forced to join. You don't have to jump off a cliff. You can carry on your life. You can carry on with your job. Just can find three hours a week to continue. Some people will find three hours a day. And at least it's those people that have very little that'll find that that's a game changer for the people, the poorest of the poor. Because now suddenly they've got something to look for every day. And they, get a, they work for three hours, they get a plate of food, and they get a token in their digital wallet. And if they want to learn a new skill, they can go and learn a new skill, and for learning a new skill, they also get a token. And whoever one of our members is teaching that new skill, whether it's baking or metalwork or, or grafting or whatever, the teachers also get a token for teaching. So we reward ourselves. Everything we do, we reward ourselves with our tokens. Everything works on three-hour shifts. And the whole, is, the whole thing is set up so that uh, the ambassador and the members in the community can go online, go onto the platform, and, and load a new community project. Whether it's picking up rubbish in the streets or mowing the, the grass in the park, each is a community development or community upliftment project. So we load those projects 
we know how many people we need for that, and then the the the, uh, the IT platform allocates the, the members to that. So uh, it's all a, a beautifully um, managed system that we've created. It's got, it's. it's it costs us a lot of money. All the money that we that we that we make month to month from the selling of the of the infinity tokens uh, is going towards running this this uh, this office and setting this up. Uh, the role of the investor. This is very important because let me explain this um, again. This is since this since I've done this um, this last presentation the last time. The the model has evolved so much. So we've suddenly now also developed a whole new way of raising funds for, for businesses. One of the businesses that we're going to raise funds for right now is our seed bank uh, initiative. So you will actually see the seed bank initiative here in Barrida. This is where it's starting. Um, we have a seed bank expert that's arriving here on Monday. We have special technology that treats the seeds with very special frequencies and and so forth. Um, so it's not GMO. Uh, it's very uh, holistic. It's like it's like uh, electroculture on steroids. You can call it that. For those who understand what electroculture is. So it takes the seeds, it treats them for three days, and those seeds become super seeds. Um, it's like they activate, it activates the primordial DNA. We're doing that in Gauteng with some millie farmers and wheat farmers. And here in Barrydale, we're going to do it with fruit trees and food trees, nut trees and fruit trees. We've already spoken to Raymond, uh, who's uh, the master horticulturist in town. He's very excited about getting involved and sharing his skills. And we have, um, we have uh, an agreement with the school, the primary school opposite Raymond's house, where the children will, start, will grow and plant seeds on a daily basis. So, a tiny little project, which is a community upliftment project, but also a business, has the potential to bring 100 million rand into this community. Did I just shock you? A little project with a bunch of primary school children can generate 100 million rand or more for Barry Day. It's insane. So, you've got three, 300 children. Every day they come, they gather seeds, we find, make sure we find seeds for them. They come to the school. We've already started this process. I'll show you some photographs now. Graham has been absolutely brilliant in, in laying the foundation for all, for all of this. We've um, provided Graham with a shredder to start making compost. We've got a compost uh, master that's going to help make compost there. The children come to school. They bring their seeds with them. At the end of the day, they go and plant their seeds. And if every child plants 10 seeds every day, that's already 3,000 seeds a day. That's just, that's a very simple arithmetic here. Right? So, whatever we're going to grow, that, those seeds are going to be treated, they're going to grow really, really well. So, plus we're going to do all the grafting and all the other teaching. We're going to grow medicinal plants, we're going to grow food and cabbage and tomatoes and everything you can imagine, avocados and pear trees and apple trees, anything we can lay our hands on, any kind of seeds. And that then gets sold to the commercial nurseries and to farmers and, and uh, to anyone who needs trees. And by looking at the market, there's literally the market seems to be almost insatiable. At the same time, whatever trees we grow, we help to beautify our town. So we have a program to go plant trees in our town, along the streets, and food trees, not just bloody ornamental trees. So we plant nut trees and fruit trees and citrus trees and so forth. Mm. And, and this becomes a huge one small town community upliftment program, all driven by the little primary school children. It's a beautiful thing. And this is our first project that we're launching here in, in Barrydale. Uh, so I really wanted to come towards the end of this uh, with this really exciting news. The school is extremely excited about that. Um, Raymond is very excited about it because suddenly he's going to have a huge outlook for his amazing skills as a horticulturist. Um, so you can imagine if the kids are, are growing 3,000 or you know, 4,000 or 6,000, if they plant 20 seeds a day, suddenly you've got 6,000 trees a day. It's, it's huge. Yes, we have the space. We've been dealing with people already. We have been speaking to farmers. We've been uh, already verbally allocated land. And this is the same wherever we go.
once the farmers realize what we are doing, they're only they're very, very keen to get involved with us because they realize it's not just about their profit and their land. It's actually about becoming part of the solution for the community for creating food security uh, as well for the future. So uh, one of the things you'll see we're going to be doing is with the special seed treatment te technology is that we're raising um, a, a seed bank token. Um, we, and we're raising $20 million for the seed bank token because we need to build uh, genetics labs, we need to build silos, and we need to seed treatment processing facilities, and so forth. So it's a, it's a big deal. And the way that we raise money for that is the way we raise money if, for example, you decided to build uh, whatever, whatever business that you need, we need 20 million rand for this business for for uh, Barry Dow. What we do is we issue a million tokens at 20 Rand each, and that's the model for any kind of fundraising, and that'll be called the Barrydale whatever token for that business, Barrydale Brewery, let's say, right? and, uh, and then we make that token available to the local community first. So this way, we are allowing the local community to become the funders and the shareholders of that business first. So it doesn't always go to outsiders. And this way we allow communities to become shareholders and, and profit shareholders in their own businesses that we start. If we can't raise the funds locally, then we go to the province. If we can't raise the funds there, we go to the country. If we can't raise it there, we open it to the world. And uh, so th this is how we've developed this funding mechanism to the simple issuing of tokens. And remember, when you're buying a token as an investment, now you're double dipping. So you, you own the token, but you also get dividends from the profits from that business while you own the token at the same time. So at any stage, you can sell those tokens, and those tokens will be valued at how well that business is doing. So if the brewery's profits are going through the roof, that token is going to go through the roof. And you're still getting dividends from the brewery, but you, your token is going through the roof as well. So it's a very interesting funding mechanism, and we're finding more and more wide awake investment bankers and agents that are contacting me saying, wow, we love this funding model of yours, can you tell me more? It's just a, it, the, the, this thing is going to explode, right? So I believe the time will come when the conscious millionaires and the conscious billionaires realize that putting their money into a small town and starting a number of cornerstone businesses, whether it's growing large-scale food and, and medicinal stuff and the bakery and the dairy and the building materials, you know, I've got $50 million, I don't know what to do with it. Let me find a small town and start all these cornerstone, these grassroots businesses. The moment the first millionaire billionaire does that, and the others see what's going on, we're going to see a stampede of investors trying to find the next small town so they can grab it first before somebody else gets there. Because the investment market is not a safe place. The normal traditional investment opportunities, the investment markets are drying up. People with money are very nervous. They have no idea what to do with their money. And you hear this day in and day out. It's just a matter of time for them to discover the One Small Town Initiative and what an incredible opportunity is for taking small towns and turning them around and turning them into these places of prosperity and abundance. And that's what we will see will start attracting the investors. So um, um, the investor can never earn more than 30%. I'm just going to go through this because I've already given you all the information. The split is very simple. Minimum of 60% always belongs to the community because we do the work and we are the co-owners of the business. The investor retains 30, 10% is uh, split between the, the local One Small Town office and the national One Small Town office. Um, and I'm just going to carry on here. Any town of 10,000 people or more has the capacity to turn over $500 million. Please go and do this research for yourself. I don't want you to just take my word, word for it. This is, this is a spectacular vision to have and to hold there. This is what we should be going towards. If we work together, we can make this work. So, um, yeah, this means that any mem every member in a community of 10,000 people will receive thousands of dollars per annum just in the cash dividends. Forget about the, you know, the, the food and everything else that we distribute and the tokens that they earn themselves. 
Just a final word on the tokens. Um, the token was launched just, uh, just more than a year ago at $1, the Infinity token. Uh, but the true value of the token was pegged at $40 because it's three hours of labor. We pegged it in dollars uh, as an international currency and $40 is the average amount you will earn if you work for three hours. So that's the true value of the Infinity token. But we launched it at $1. The algorithm that it's connected to has already pushed it to $1.87, so that's the current price. But then we froze the algorithm because we are fixing the, the blockchain and fixing the IT and fixing everything. We're about to unlock the blockchain and load the, all the latest you know, towns and members that have joined and all the work that has been done. When we unlock the blockchain, it's probably going to jump to beyond $2.50. So it's just, it just keeps going up and up and up. And uh, sooner or later, it'll remain open and live. Um, and then people can see the actual growth of the infinity token value on a daily basis. So it's still backed by the dollar? No, it's not backed by the dollar. It's, we just, we just value it. No, no, it's not backed by the dollar. We can choose to stop selling it at, at, at the dollar price. We just, we're just pitching it against the dollar as an international fiat currency. It's backed by our slave labor. You remember, you the, the member. The, once you have the token in your hands, there'll come a time that, um, uh, at the end of the month, let me put it this way: at the end of the month, when you go to the one small town store to get your basket of goods, right, whatever that basket is at that month, uh, you go there and you 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 sacrifice one of your tokens just as proof that you received your basket of goods. So you're not not paying for it with a token because we can't say that because then we fall under the Securities and Exchange Act. So trust we have to be very careful how this is structured. So, so you, you sacrifice the token as proof that you received your basket of goods. But people aren't stupid. They'll know that that basket of goods is the value of one token. Because that's what, in essence what you're getting. This is so, not so, that a simple way to maybe explain it. I know it is, but it's fine. The penny dro eventually drops. Yeah. The penny eventually drops. Yeah. <laughs> so, so at the end of the month, <laughs> what's the time, by the way? Quarter to you. Quarter to you. Okay. So I'm going to finish off here. Thank you. Yes. So uh, there's a Q&A section on our website. What I'm going to ask you. So let me finish this. So and then and um, so. Imagine if you go at the end of the month, we've been doing this for five years now, or three years, or two years, who knows what, and suddenly we're growing a huge amount of millies and God knows what, you know, so you get, you get juice and water, and milk and bread and a bicycle and like I said, a, potentially a laptop or whatever, in your basket of goods. So what is the value of the token? It's the value of all the things that you got. So that's the true value of what the token is going to be. So people aren't going to just give their tokens away. They're going to hold on to them. So, and that creates even more demand and more scarcity. Unless you've worked for it, you ain't getting it. You can't just buy it. You have to be a member. It's not an open platform like cryptocurrencies, uh, crypto uh, you know, exchanges all over the world. No, you have to sign up as a member. There's a membership club membership um, initiative. You have to be a member to have these benefits. And to be a member is free, doesn't cost anything, so go online. So to finish here this evening is go online when you, get, when you go home. Go to onesmalltown.org, that's our website, and sign up as a member. Just follow the prompts. You just, you know, sign up as a member and, and become a member. Um, I'll send the link. Actually, to even better, Put Graham them. is going to send a link yeah. because Graham, as the ambassador, has a Q, has a, a, a link to send you. You just open up and then fill in your details, and then you automatically are a member of Barrydale because you filled in Graham's uh, uh, you referral. Link. Uh, yes, eventually. Not now. This is just starting. So that'll evolve so as we go. Big buildings get designed. The what? Yeah. When the buildings that house the seed project get designed, that's going to be dis determined by the by the people in the community. So, um, so what we need is to surround Gray with a bunch of people that uh, become sort of part of the Barrydale management team that are passionate about this, that want to be involved in it, 
We need people with good business skills, um, with, uh, with uh, business management, with project management, with accounting, to make sure that uh, what's happening in the businesses is, um, is running smoothly. And, uh, and the distribution of funds is, uh, is not going to be questioned because somebody has been fiddling the books. So that needs to be very clear and very transparent. Keep in mind that every member, when you sign up, you'll see what happens. You go on, you open your, your membership uh, account on, on your phone or laptop and it, it shows you exactly what you can do. See the, the, the performance of the businesses so you can see exactly how much profit and how well each business is doing. And you can see exactly how much profit has been distributed to every member of the community. So it's a completely transparent system. No one can cheat, no one can hide you. They say, oh, we didn't do too well, no money being distributed this month. No, that doesn't work with one, one small town. So um, it's a very exciting uh, time. Uh, the benefits to investors, obviously, no hostile competitors. The community becomes your partner. The whole community is on your side and cooperates for your success as an investor. Uh, plus, you, you get a free labor force, obviously. That's our benefit and the investor's benefit. And then all the other things, the, the components and ingredients and everything we do becomes a lot cheaper, sometimes free, because we do it for ourselves. And unmatched competitive prices and, adva and, and, and uh, advantage in our products. And many other benefits like cheap electricity, clean water and other healthcare, which I'll talk about later in videos that I'll be re releasing. But just to let you know, we have technology that is going to be a game changer on every level. But we don't discuss that openly because that's when people start to die. So just be aware of that. Yeah. It's, that, it's that sensitive, and I'm not joking when I say that. I've been doing this for many years, and at least six of the inventors I've worked with have either disappeared or uh, been threatened and told us never to contact them again, and so forth. So this is not a joke. This is seriously not a joke. Um, so finally, uh, I want to say is that we're not waiting for anyone to save us. We're doing it for ourselves, and I believe that we're the ones we've been waiting for, and that's why I'm here, and Barrydale is the first town in South Africa to really embrace this. Um, these are some of the other countries that we're very busy in. And to finish here, finally, just to show you just some of the activities from here uh, that, we've, that has happened in the last week or so.